In this video, we are going to uh, look at how to use the integral test and the P-series test to determine convergence or divergence of a sum infinite series. We're going to start with the integral test. Let's say we have this generic um, infinite series, a sub n. Uh, when we are using the integral test, the first thing that we're going to do is take uh, our expression for a sub n keeping in mind that n represents counting numbers. And so a sequence uh, represented by a sub n is going to be uh, some discrete points. And so what we want to do is uh, change a sub n to a function of x so that we can actually integrate it. Um, the integral test is a test that actually has some conditions that we have to consider uh, just like uh, we've done in the past with uh, intermediate value theorem or mean value theorem or even L'Hopital's rule. Before we can apply those things, we have to make sure that the conditions are met. And for the integral test, the conditions are this. Um, f of x must be three things. Positive, continuous, and decreasing. Uh, for x greater than or equal to 1. So before we can use this uh, test, we do have to verify these three conditions. Uh, now, if our function f of x meets those conditions, then this is what the integral test says. Um, keep in mind that we're talking about an infinite series. The terms of our sequence are we're going to have infinitely many of those terms. n is going to infinity which means that when we uh, write this as an integral, which obviously we're going to do, it's called the integral test, um, it's actually going to be an improper integral. Limit as b goes to infinity, integral from 1 to b of our function f of x. And I'm going to let that be equal to some value l, <clears throat> or maybe no value at all. Here's what the integral test says. If L exists, then we can say that our series converges. If that limit exists, then we can say the series converges. Although it's really important to note, not necessarily to L. I think when we use this test and we end up getting a limit here, we're very tempted to say that this infinite series is actually equal to L, and it's not. The integral of this similar function is equal to L, which tells me that this series converges, but we don't necessarily know what it converges to. If L does not exist, then our series diverges. <clears throat> and so the integral test, <clears throat> I think this part here should certainly make sense that if we have a limit, the series converges. If we don't have a limit, the series diverges. Uh, that part is fairly simple. The challenging part of the integral test is remembering the conditions, setting them up, before we actually integrate. And then there's also the added challenge of actually doing the integral. Let's look at an example. Let's say that we have the series n over n squared plus 1. So if I am going to use the integral test to determine whether or not this series converges or diverges, the first thing that I want to do is rewrite the series as a function of x. And then we need to consider, does this function meet the conditions? Remember, this is just for x greater than 1. 
if x is greater than 1, then this function will indeed be positive. Um, my denominator is never going to be equal to zero, so I know that this function is continuous, and because the degree in my denominator is higher than the degree in the numer numerator, um, it will be decreasing for x greater than one. So all of the conditions are true. We can apply the integral test. And so I'm going to write this as an improper integral. And so now we're ready to uh, integrate and evaluate this limit. Um, I can see that my numerator is a at least a version of the derivative of the denominator. So we're going to use u substitution to evaluate this integral. And um, while I'm going through the process of u substitution, I don't want to have to keep rewriting the limit as b goes to infinity, all this notation. And so let's just consider the indefinite integral over here to the side and find that antiderivative. If I let u equal uh, x squared plus 1, I'm hoping this is a u sub we can do in our heads. Um, if my u is x squared plus 1, my du would be 2x. And so we would just be integrating 1 over u. Um, the du would be 2x dx, which means dx would be uh, x divided by Two, so we're going to have a one-half out there in the front to compensate for that two that we're missing in the du. And this integral is, of course, one-half natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, which is one-half natural log of x squared plus one plus c. Okay, so this is going to be my antiderivative. Now I'm going to go back to my improper integral. So this will be the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half natural log of x squared plus 1 from 1 to b using our antiderivative that we determined over here. And we're going to plug in 1 and b. So 1 half natural log of b squared plus 1 minus 1 half natural log of, if I plug in 1, we get 2. And um, actually on this one, we could have dropped the absolute value along the way. x squared plus 1 is never going to be negative, uh, so they're really not necessary, but I've continued to use them. Um, if b goes to infinity, then the natural log of b squared plus 1 that term is, of course, going to go to infinity, and that means that this limit does not exist. And since the limit does not exist, therefore, our uh, series diverges. Now, you may be looking at that and thinking, wow, that's a lot of work uh, to determine diverging or converging. And yes, I agree that it is. Um, I will say that integral test tends to be kind of a last resort test. We're going to try almost any other test first uh, because this one does often take a little bit of work. However, I'm introducing integral tests now because we're going to use it to prove um, the analysis part of the P-series test. So a p-series is um, an infinite series that, uh, that we can write in this form uh, where we have a constant over n to some exponent p. And uh, what we're going to see here is that uh, these series, they converge for some values of p, but not all values of p. And that's what we want to try to figure out is when is this going to converge, for what values of p does it converge, and for what values of p is it going to diverge. And we're going to use the integral test to uh, determine this. So uh, let's start with uh, this series, which I'm actually going to write out in this form. 
uh, because we need to be familiar with what this series looks like. I can, of course, write this general term as 1 over n. And uh, so we have the series of 1 over n from 1 to infinity. This is called uh, the harmonic series. And so we're going to use the integral test to determine if the harmonic series converges or diverges. Um, I'm going to rewrite 1 over n as 1 over x. And 1 over x is as long as x is greater than 1, this is going to be positive. Um, it is continuous because our discontinuity happens at 0 but we're starting with x greater than 1. And we know that that graph is uh, decreasing. It's one of your apparent function graphs. So let's evaluate the limit. Uh, the limit is b goes to infinity, integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. And no need for u sub here. This is going to be a little easier than our first example. We just get the natural log of x from 1 to b. And if I uh, use our fundamental theorem of calculus, this is natural log of b minus the natural log. Sorry, there we go. Natural log of b minus the natural log of 1. And as b goes to infinity, uh, natural log of b of course, will go to infinity. And so this limit um, does not exist. And therefore, sorry about that. Uh, therefore, uh, the, and I'm going to call it by its name here, the harmonic series diverges. And uh, now that we've seen this here, uh, this is actually a statement that from now on we can just use whenever we see the harmonic series, um, we know that it diverges. Anybody that is studying series and calculus knows that the harmonic series diverges. We don't have to go through the integral test anymore to prove it. Uh, the harmonic series diverges. So, um, <clears throat> and I guess I failed to point out when I rewrote it as one over n, this is a p series where our p value is 1. This would be 1 over n to the 1. Remember, our p series look like this. This is n to the 1. Uh, that diverges. So now I'm going to consider, um, let's consider 1 over the square root of n. If I want to write that as a p-series, I would write it as 1 over n to the 1 half. And again, we're going to use the integral test to um, evaluate this or to determine, I'm sorry, if this series converges or diverges. So 1 over n to the 1 half, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over x to the 1 half. And... Um, 1 over x to the 1 half, as long as x is greater than 1, this is going to be positive, continuous, and decreasing. It meets all the conditions for the integral test. So I'm going to set up the integral. Limit as b goes to infinity, integral from 1 to b. Um, and actually, for integration purposes, I'm going to rewrite that as x to the negative 1 half dx. And uh, so we're going to use our power rule for integration. I'm just going to add 1. Uh, negative 1 half plus 1 would be positive 1 half divided by 1 half, which is the same as times 2 from 1 to b. 
And so I have the limit as b goes to infinity of 2 times the square root of b minus 2 times the square root of 1. And of course, the square root function as b goes to infinity, the square root function also goes uh, to this term goes to infinity. And so my limit does not exist. And therefore, 1 over n to the 1 half diverges. So if p equals 1, the series diverges. If p is equal to 1 half, the series also diverges. So next up, let's consider 1 over n to the 3 halves. So I started with a p-value of 1. I tried a p-value that was a little bit less than 1. Now we're going to try a p-value that's a little bit greater than 1. Again, using the integral test. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over x to the 3 halves. And as long as x is greater than 1, 1 over x to the 3 halves is positive continuous and decreasing. It meets all our conditions. So I'm going to write it as an integral. Uh, writing it as x to the negative 3 halves for the purpose of integration. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to use that power rule again. Sorry for the bells in the video. Um, I'm going to add 1. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity. Um, x to the, if I add 1, I get x to the 1 half divided by 1 half, which would be the same as times 2. I'm sorry, my mistake. x to the negative 1 half times negative 2. Sorry, negative 3 halves plus 1 would be negative 1 half. Uh, from 1 to b. So negative 2 over the square root of b minus negative 2 over the square root of 1. So finally, we get 1. If b goes to infinity, since that b is in the denominator now, um, this term is actually going to go to 0. And so this limit uh, is equal to 0 plus 2, which is 2. Therefore, the series 1 over n to the 3 halves converges. Not necessarily to 2, but it does converge. And so finally, we got an integral test uh, that we did that converged. But this uh, kind of shows us the, um, like the different ways that a P-series can come out if we're using the integral test. And it sets us up for the P-series test, uh, which states, if I have... a series of this form, 1 over n to the p. Um, we no longer have to use the integral test on series that look like this uh, because we're going to state that if p is greater than 1, If p is greater than 1, like we had in this example where our p-value was 3 halves and we ended up with an actual limit and this one converged. If p is greater than 1, then 1 over n to the p converges. If p is less than or equal to 1,
1 over n to the p diverges. Now, if we think about this closely, hopefully maybe you're thinking, okay, that's similar to the geometric series test. And it is similar, but notice it's actually kind of the opposite of geometric series. For a geometric series, if our common ratio is greater than one, that was when the geometric series diverged, or if it was equal to one. And then if the common ratio was less than one, that was when we uh, got a convergent geometric series. With P series, it's just the opposite. If P is greater than one, that's when our P series converges. If P is less than or equal to one, uh, that's when our P series diverges. Now, we do not always have to do the integral test anymore. If we can rewrite um, a series to look like a P series, uh, let's say, for example, we have this 1 over 3n times the fifth root of n. I can rewrite this as 1 over 3 times n to the, this would be n to the 1, and this is n to the 1 fifth. So together I get n to the 6 fifths. Um, and I know we've got a constant multiple down there. Uh, we can bring that out to the front if we want it, you know, just in a clean looking P series form. Um, these are equivalent. And so now that I have it in this form, I can say this is a P series. P equals 6 fifths, which is greater than 1. And therefore, my series that I started with, if P is greater than 1, the P series converges. This series converges. And so now that we've kind of gone through the different examples with the integral test, we have our P series here. We no longer have to use an integral test on a series that looks like this because we can just apply this uh, P-series test to say whether or not it converges or diverges.